Oh, at least 20 officers are still recovering from injuries in yesterday's riots. One person is critically hurt in one of the 144 car fires set, and some three dozen people have been arrested. Brett Solomon live in Baltimore tonight with a closer look at what's happening right now. Brent? What a difference a day makes. Let me walk over here and show you this right here. Today, a party in the streets following a night of violence and even chaos for area businesses. As demonstrators join together in peaceful song and dance Tuesday afternoon, other neighbors are cleaning up from a night that was anything but peaceful. At the Best Care Pharmacy, looters broke down the back door, ransacked the local business, and cleared the pharmacy of its prescription drugs. The store serves the urban community where it's located. It hasn't been open for two years and may now have to close for months. The patients that will usually will come here to get their medicine, they won't be able to get it. So it's all destroyed. It's all destroyed, you know. So who is suffering? We, them, their parents, you know, their loved ones. As police stand by with riot gear, a general curfew is in place across the city of Baltimore starting at 10 tonight. And I'm learning about several efforts underway right now following a pretty contentious past 24 hours here, including a vigil in honor of Freddie Gray and a forum on how to protest peacefully. On your side in Baltimore, Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Brent Solomon is live in Baltimore talking to people who are now trying to rebound from the chaotic last few days. Brent? I tell you what, that vigil expected to wrap up in about 30 minutes. Right now, we're in the thick of things. I want to walk around right now and show you what we're seeing. There is a sense of hope here. As you see this shirt right here, it says Baltimore Believes. And you can see other protesters are gathering. Take a look at this sign that says All Lives Matter. Hundreds of people showing up in force today just to say they can protest in peace. God first. Prayers for patience and peace as demonstrators flood the streets of Baltimore one day after violence leaves the city in shambles. It pissed me off. Vietnam War vet R.J. Valentine noticed the looting and stepped outside his door to tell the bold thugs to stop. Today he's back at the forefront, standing as a barrier between police and riot gear and the swarm of neighbors assembling. To save them from getting hurt and to save them from getting hurt, to see if we can work out a solution to make it right. Perhaps a needed intervention after businesses like this one are now destroyed because of looters. We walk through the Best Care Pharmacy to see how bold vandals and thieves ransack the place. The patients that will usually will come here to get their medicine, they won't be able to get it. So it's all destroyed. It's all destroyed, you know. So who is suffering? We, them their parents, you know, their loved ones. With children out of school Tuesday, this 16-year-old took time to seek justice for Freddie Gray, though he says he's angry that some are reacting violently. It's bigger than Freddie Gray right now. Like, every life matter, not just black lives, every life matter. There's a movement going on. It's blacks, whites, Hispanics, everybody's out here to support. Evident in the civil demonstrations playing out as hundreds of neighbors down the road now cleaning up the aftermath of demonstrations that were anything but civil. They, they broke into the stores and made a mess and we cleaned, we cleaned it up. Are you optimistic? Do you think this community can rebuild and get through these tensions? Yes. They have to. They can. But they have to be willing to. All right, back live now. Following the chaos that unfolded overnight, the mayor here sent a message saying she hates to see her city like this. But she says like so many of the people here, she has strong resolve, a sense of optimism, even though no one knows what nightfall could bring. I am on your side in Baltimore. Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Hours before the city of Baltimore goes under a strict curfew, thousands of people gather to voice their frustrations. We're live with the very latest. We begin tonight with Brent Solomon. Brent has been in Baltimore for us all day and night. Brent, tell us what's happening where you are right now. We are right on the front lines. As you can see behind me, officers are lined up, ready to go, prepared for the very worst. And as you mentioned, that library fire just set. Uh, within the past 20 minutes or so, we are at the intersection of that library right now. Officers throwing pepper balls at a crowd that seems to refuse to disperse. I just wanted to say that I'm angry about 
the way we're being viewed as not people. Strong sentiments from a Baltimore teenager heard before a crowd of 3,000 tonight, gathering at a town hall forum to vent as tensions play out outside these four walls. Seeing that unnerved me, and I've seen a lot of them. Candace Dickens wants the community to unite, though she says she understands why growing frustrations led to chaos. When our boys get older, somehow they get, they get fearful. They you know, become afraid of them or they stigmatize our children. And my thinking is the children who are running in these streets are trying to communicate that they're in pain. We have schools that are being closed down. Um, they live in areas where there's no playground. They're not a lot of summer jobs for a lot of kids because their budgets have been cut, so they're frustrated. Hours before tonight's curfew went into effect, dancers and drummers took to the streets, calling for no more violence. We want peace! It's been a day-long effort to unite Baltimore following looting, arsonists, and neighbors throwing rocks at police. They want their voices heard even though we may consider it being heard in the wrong way. They, they've been yelling for help. Celeste Tolliver spent the day cleaning trash vandals left behind. She's praying for peace tonight. Let's not make another mess to have to clean up again. This is thousands share their ideas to make Baltimore better. Activism starts with just one step. And stand in the front line and not do the talking. We're putting the ground yeah. on All right, we are back live right now. You see those officers with their riot gear in hand. They are joined by officers from surrounding departments and even uh, the National Guard, all committed to ensure that there is peace in Baltimore tonight. But whether or not that will be the case really remains unknown with all of those protesters continuing to gather just beyond these officers behind me. I am committed to stay right here to keep you posted on how this all unfolds. But for now, we're on your side in Baltimore. Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Thank you, Brent. Please be careful. Brent Solomon live this morning in Baltimore, where city leaders are defending their actions to uh, place that city on lockdown. Brent, you were live there yesterday. You're live again this morning. Talk about the difference you're seeing this morning between yesterday and today. Well, a very good morning to you. That curfew has been lifted about an hour and a half now. And as you can see behind me, the streets are clear. It's pretty quiet right now. And uh, the police commissioner here is saying that curfew worked. Though officers did have to make some arrests last night, those arrests were minimal when you consider the big picture here. I want to show you the scene in Baltimore just hours before last night's 10 p.m. curfew went into place. 1,000 local and nearby police officers and even the National Guard were on hand to enforce it, prepared to make arrests as necessary. Last night, though, authorities say they only had to make 10 arrests once that curfew took effect. What I noticed firsthand was restraint from law enforcement last night. Initially, some 200 protesters ignored the mandatory curfew and tried to agitate law enforcement, even throwing bottles at officers. But the department stood quietly for the most part. At one point, they threw pepper balls into the crowd and even smoke bombs to break it up. We have schools that are being closed down. Um, they live in areas where there's no playground. They're not a lot of summer jobs for a lot of kids because their budgets have been cut, so they're frustrated. All right, in a notice posted online, school officials advise there will be school this morning, unlike yesterday. That will include after school sports and activities. But since the 10 p.m. curfew will be back in place tonight, the city will be under the careful eye of authorities who want to keep it safe following those tensions. Now, immediately after last night's curfew, some slight resistance again with hundreds of protesters refusing to leave. Some even actually laid on the ground in opposition, but that did not last long. The crowd eventually complied, and city leaders are saying Baltimore was indeed safe overnight. But one interesting point I'd like to point out tonight, the Baltimore Orioles baseball game scheduled for tonight, it will still take place, but fans will not be there. It will be closed to the public. We're on your side in Baltimore this morning. Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Brent Solomon, thank you for that live report. Brent Solomon is in Baltimore with the latest on the situation. Traffic at this East Baltimore intersection is flowing again one day after protesters shut it down. A sign the city is trying to get back to normal.
A scaled back but still strong police presence greeted Baltimore neighbors today as they returned to work and took their children back to school after the school district canceled all classes Tuesday. It was a result of this looting and violence following protest after the death of Freddie Gray while in police custody. Protester Dominique Helgeth holding a Black Lives Matter sign wanting the attention to shift from all of the violence to the reason that brought so many here in the first place. I want the focus to be on the brutality that these people face day in, day out, here for a long time. And now that there's finally visibility on it, I think the focus needs to stay on what the, the issue is at hand. We were there last night as the National Guard flooded the streets to enforce the first night of curfew, which will resume for the rest of the week. So how was the first night of curfew? Well, I was in the house. I got off at 11 and I went out. The mindset city leaders want all of Baltimore to share as they work to restore calm. Coming up new at 6, I'll introduce you to a Richmond College student joining the effort to bring peace to the streets of Baltimore. That's why we're on your side this evening. Brent Solomon, NBC 12. Today was the first day back to school for students as police remain on standby for any outbreaks of violence into the night. Brent Solomon is following all of these developments live from Baltimore. A greater sense of calm in Baltimore today, but still a very heavy police presence as you see over my shoulder here. Around the same time, the city went under lockdown. Someone actually set a fire outside of the library right here. So many people here telling me they really want to get through all of this without all of the conflict. Wednesday, bringing renewed hope Baltimore will overcome. I see the result of years of neglect. Malik Thomas traveled from Richmond to Baltimore in agreement with those calling for change. Even beyond the quote-unquote black-on-black violence that we see in this neighborhood, there's violence where we have check cashing places, more check cashing places than we have banks, where we have more corner stores offering chips and, and soda and candy than we have grocery stores offering fresh food and vegetables. He believes that aspect of everyday life reached a tipping point with Freddie Gray's death in police custody. It led to riots and looting, some of it unfolding at this now destroyed CVS pharmacy right next to 75-year-old Janice Kelly's home. I couldn't get home because of this. The last time she's seen anything close to this, the Baltimore riots in the late 60s. Martin Luther King, but nothing like this. A community hoping their unity will speak volumes. But how long will you do this? For instance, will this all be gone when the cameras leave? No. People, people are here. I live here. This is a catalyst. So many beautiful things are going to be born out of this moment right now. Tuesday night, when the streets were supposed to be clear due to a citywide curfew, some protesters stayed throwing bottles at police. It's why neighbors like R.J. Valentine continue to volunteer, standing between agitators and those working to keep the peace. Well, makes sense. I'm not a hero, man. That's what everyone is saying about you, Mr. Valentine. I'm not a hero. In just a few hours, another curfew will kick in for the second night in a row. This is I'm learning about another effort to hold a massive peaceful demonstration outside of City Hall come Sunday. On your side in Baltimore, Brent Solomon, NBC 12. All right, Brent, thanks so much. As we go into the evening, stay with us for the latest on events in Baltimore, including updates on our breaking news app. You'll also find our coverage online on Facebook and on the free NBC 12 News app.